Insperity presents the Small Business Advocate Show with Jim Blassingame, brought to you by FedEx, CareerBuilder.com, and Palo Alto Software. This is a copyrighted production of Small Business Network, Inc., all rights reserved. Welcome back, 7 till the hour. Jim Blasting Game, little little Texas blues there. ZZ Top, bring this back. Thank you for being part of my day. Barbara Weltman is our guest, 14-year founding original member of our Brain Trust, the author of J.K. Lasser's Small Business Taxes 2012, also 2011, and et cetera, et cetera. She's the host of her outstanding Grow Your Business radio show on Monday afternoons at 4 o'clock Eastern, as I remember, Barbara. Build your business on wsradio.com. There you go. That's it. Build your business. You can find it more on her website, barbaraweltman.com. Please check out my website, too, folks, smallbusinessadvocate.com. Don't forget to check out the, the, the video this week is is about sales pipelines, the Blessing Games Law of sales, pipe, sales Pipelines. Don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter. Check out the, the poll question right there on the home page. All that stuff is right there at Small Business Advocate, including smallbusinessadvocate.com, including the, the, uh, the information that Barbara has given us over the years. Barbara, the... Rand Paul, Senator, uh, Con- Senator Rand Paul, I should say, from Kentucky, uh, a, a, a junior senator, a, a, a Tea Party senator, you told me in, during the break yesterday introduced a flat tax bill. Can you tell us? Yeah, about a that? 17% corporate and individual tax rate mm-hmm. program. So all of the details aren't uh, well known yet, but this isn't the first flat tax bill to be introduced, right. uh, but I think if this is a very appropriate time of the year to do it because people can see what's right. involved in the, with their taxes. I now. covered. It's, I ri- cov- it's a ridiculous waste of of the national resources. What goes into pre- preparation and right. record keeping and all of this? It's just a waste of of resources. I covered this back in in the ninety eight. Barbara, beginning in '98, we covered the with the, Steve the, Forbes this Steve, proposal with our buddy Steve Forbes with Bernie Tozen right. out of Louisiana. He was in favor of the value added tax. Steve was in favor of the flat tax. We've been talking about this all these years. Nothing's happened really at all. But a flat, but but whether it can happen or not, whether it could pass or not, Barbara, let's talk about the the some of the benefits that could be achieved from a flat tax. What do, what do you, what would you say would be would be some of the, the other than the fact that that, that filing would be simplified. Uh, we would, you know, we, we would have less, uh, uh, you know, less concern about about all the different things that we might miss uh, in a, in, a, in our complicated code. What would, how would it work? Well, in order to achieve the flat tax, it means giving up a lot of the tax breaks that people have come to know and love so well. So I don't know they're the details. They're intertwined in the in the marketplace, aren't they? Precisely. For example, one of the biggies is the home mortgage interest deduction. Right. And people don't want to give that up. Now, in the 17% so that, percent that Rand recommends, a lot of these proposals include certain things for families. Right, right, exactly. There's going to be certain breaks for families. Another issue is what's going to happen with a charitable contribution deduction. Mm-hmm. Charities are dependent on contributions that get incentivized by tax write-offs. But but, but, so, but having a flat tax isn't mutually exclusive with making contributions either. That could be that can be fixed too. They yeah, but the point is the more tax breaks that they allow to continue, right, right. the higher the flat tax rate has to be in order to mm-hmm. bring it down to 17%, mm-hmm. which is pretty low. They got to do away with a lot of stuff. And the opponents of the flat tax say that it's, you know, it's it's kind of a regressive thing that that billionaires are paying the same as middle income people. But middle income people are getting a, a more a, a much higher percentage of their income uh, uh, ex- exempted. Yes, that that uh, is true. That, so that, if you're, if, certain, what is certain, a party of four, a family of four gets. Would, and typically what I've seen, a family of four would get a $47,000 income exemption or something like that. Right, right. Um, one of the problems, uh, you know, one of, the, one of my concerns is that 
and I haven't seen the numbers on this, how many uh, people will actually be exempted from paying tax, as you say, with that mm-hmm. income level exemption. Right. It may wind up being that less than 50% of the population is paying tax. Mm-hmm. We're, we're close to that tipping point now. We're right. about 47% right. now. But I don't want to go there. I don't want to yeah. have a, a situation where uh, only uh, a, a, poor, uh, a, a minority are paying tax. We do need to broaden country. the base, don't we? Yes, Because I think we so. need to have everybody with a little skin in the game. That's the problem. With Precisely. It. Right, and that's the tipping point we don't want to go beyond. Hey, Barbara, thanks again for 14 great years. Thanks for all you do for small business. We're proud of you, and we'll see well, you next time. Well, thank you, Jim. You do a, a superb job. Thank you. Barbara Weltman, ladies and gentlemen, one of, one of our heroes. I got to go for this hour. I'm Jim Blassingame. I'll see you later. Insperity presents the Small Business Advocate Show with Jim Blassingame, brought to you by FedEx, CareerBuilder.com, and Palo Alto Software. This is a copyrighted production of Small Business Network, Inc., intended for the private use of our audience. Except as otherwise provided by copyright law, all other copying, redistribution, or publication without prior written consent is prohibited. All rights reserved.